When we got an email from a guy named Dwayne Osi, we had no idea it would lead to quite an adventure. To start with, he lives in one of the most remote places in the United States, and it was very hard to get there. We had to fly there in a light plane. Say a little prayer now. He's coming in. There are no roads anywhere near this five acres of forest in the Alaskan wilderness. It's nearly 80 miles northwest of Mount McKinley and more than 100 miles from the nearest highway. And this is where we found Dwayne Osi, formerly of Echo, Minnesota, now the last homesteader in Alaska. Look at Dwayne Osi. <laughs> Jason Davis. We'd come here to learn why this 69-year-old man with one eye had given up a successful concrete business in Minnesota to carve out a home in such a remote part of the United States. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's very, very nice good. to be here. Thank you for being here. Thanks. 1986 was the final year that anyone could claim land in Alaska under the 114-year-old Homestead Act. So in a frantic effort to beat the deadline, 43-year-old Dwayne Osi and his son Dan hacked their way across the swamps, forests and tundra to stake a claim. This home video shot by Dwayne shows a return trip in 1987 with Jeff Peterson from Minneapolis. This is the last chance for any, any federal home setting to do. They closed the act and so I'm the last one on the list. It took 57 miles, 15 days to get here. Braving woods full of grizzly and black bear and huge unpredictable moose, the pioneers slogged through the brush for more than two weeks. Then one day, Duane looked at the crest of a small hill at his little piece of heaven on earth. To walk across this land and have the hair in the back of your neck stand up and say, that's it. Away up there, big country. It is a tremendous feeling. I found a stake in the ground and I told my son Dan this is where I'm going to build a house. But a house is not a home and Dwayne needed a very special woman to share his dream. Through a magazine ad he found Rena Adeline Davel, a 48-year-old French-Canadian divorcee. And in 1991 the two of them set out in an old truck for Alaska to start a new life and build a home in the wilderness. This is what you look like after five days on the road. <laughs> When the trail ran out, the two adventurers had to load all their stuff into float planes and fly to the lake closest to their tiny piece of land. From there, it was a long walk through the brush to where Rena saw for the first time what would be her home. Three and a half mile walk up a hill with a full pack on her back and come into a dugout that's made into a hillside of 9 by 11. I came to a very small cabin, hole in the ground. <laughs> a crude dugout built from rough sawn lumber, a toilet that was just an old seat over a bucket, and the air full of swarming mosquitoes. But there was no turning back. The plane wasn't due back for six months. She had no choice. The two pioneers immediately set to work. A home site was selected, the trees and brush were cleared, and Duane dug a huge hole in the ground for a log house. Using what they found around them and some simple equipment, the ingenious couple found ways to cut Haul and lift massive logs into place. Like block and tackle I bought down in Minnesota for 50 bucks. Ship rig, one person can lift up a whole big tree. Each log fitted snugly against the next, and just to make sure it was airtight, Rena stuffed moss into the cracks. They worked side by side, shoulder to shoulder through the summer, and into a winter where the temperature often fell to 20 degrees below zero. There is still no steady supply of electricity, no water, apart from what comes with the rain. But today, a beautiful three-bedroom, three-level home looks out across the valley at the highest mountain in North America. The couple can comfortably sit in their own living room and talk about how they'd arrived at this unique lifestyle. They say getting to this point hasn't been easy, but it has its compensations. We live within our means. Uh, we don't have any uh, mortgage. We don't have any taxes to pay buy everything with cash, uh, no monthly bills. They survive on social security oh, yes, payments and disability insurance. Duane has been partially blind well, since an incident call. many years ago we when his irate wife... Okay. The ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get that straight. The ex-wife yes, shot him at point-blank range. 
I had my left eye taken out, and the bullet went around inside my skull and ended up in the right rear quarter. Is it still there? It's still there. These uh, days, Dwayne never goes outside without a very large pistol strapped to his hip, to not in fear of and, wives, uh, ex or otherwise, but because of the, the ever-present danger of running into an irate grizzly bear. It has happened. I was standing at, holding the gun, aiming at it, and if it would have charged me, I would have had to pull the trigger and hope that I'd take it with me. Black bears are common around the homestead, but so far, Rena says, they haven't been a problem. Generally, when I'm picking berries, they're usually sitting next to me picking berries, too, and then i got to shoot them away. The greatest danger is that if one of them gets sick or has an accident, help is far, far away. What's really horrifying is when you're in the woods and you hear your wife scream a blood-curdling cry. We had to ride all the way down to the dock, which is three and a half miles. With a broken leg. With a broken leg. I strapped her leg to mine and then gingerly rolled down that trail. We all tried That's to. not the way I remember it. <laughs> we, tried, we tried to make it. Dwayne and Rena are almost self-sufficient. Once a month, a friend flies in basic supplies, but they live largely on what they can hunt and what they can grow. Carrots and all that will be canned goods. Potatoes, uh, that'll last us a year. We have a strawberry patch. It has been 18 years since Dwayne pounded that steak into the thin soil of central Alaska. Now, the last homesteaders live in comparative luxury. They still lack the utilities we all take for granted, but they have each other and a kind of peace and quiet hard to find anywhere else in today's busy world. Dwayne Osi and his wife Rena are not getting any younger and sooner or later they're going to have to leave their little heaven on earth. But they hope this property will stand as a testament to their perseverance and hard work. I'm looking a thousand years ahead and uh, other people will be coming here.